Welcome back, party people. Welcome back. Really, welcome back to me. I was the one out last week, so thanks for having me. I'm pretty glad to be here. I am Todd Tremonti. This is DFW Real Estate, and we got a lot to get to today. We're going to get right into it, but first, we want you to join the party. Call or text us your real estate questions, 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008. We'll answer your questions about your DFW real estate. You can always also go online to toddtremonteteam.com or just Google Todd Tremonti and you can find out what your home would sell for, rent for. You can search every house by every agent and all of DFW. You can fill out scorecards, find out if you're ready to buy, sell, or invest, and a ton of other things, all at toddtremonteteam.com. We are clearly well into the spring market right now. We've been saying that for over a month here on this show. Uh, activity is happening in our market. There are multiple offer scenarios. There are backup offers. Uh, what does it mean? Are we back where we were uh, 2020, 2021? We will get into that today. Is there optimism in the market for the first time in a long time? Is it still a confusing, mixed up market? Or is it all hype and there's reason for fear and concern? We will get into it. We'll cover the headlines of the day and we will point you in the direction of wisdom as it relates to you and your buying, selling, and investing in real estate. If you need anything at all, let us know. 214-310-0008 or go online to toddtremonteteam.com. Listen, the gang is back together. The English wonder himself is right in front of me. Hey. He's got a gorgeous green shirt on. Mm -hmm. He's all mic'd up. Yep. We've got full price Courtney in studio, mic'd up. She's got a nice pink drinking vessel. She seems to be very proud of. Hey, everybody. There she is. She's trying to rip my ear out. With We're going to do this microphone. thing. Listen, if you if you like it enough to, to listen to it again or catch it if you miss it, Courtney's making it happen as a podcast for y'all. Just go to your Apple podcast and look up DFW Real Estate Weekly. If you don't remember all that and you happen to remember my name, just look for Todd Tremonti. You'll find us there. This first segment is going to be brought to you by Patrick Galeros and Cardinal Financial. Like we've told you for years and years and years, Patrick has put together a team of world-class experts to help you uh, in anything to do with uh, refinancing, getting a loan, whatever that looks like. You can go to patrickgaleros.com. You can start an application right there on the website. You can call them at 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308 eight zero four again it's patrickglovis.com you can go to toddtremonteteam.com where you can click the radio tab and find out all of our recommended pros and vendors right there let's kick us off with a question that came in and it's kind of a broad topic but it's really one that's like hey how what are some of your top tips to go about getting a great deal on buying a home in dallas Top and I say tips. Dallas, DFW. Top tips for getting a great deal on a house in DFW. Okay, I was I was mulling over top tips because there's actually more than most people would think. There's a, there's a lot of ways to go about this. One of the best ways is to identify properties that are not being publicly marketed, right? So what do I mean by that? We are not in every scenario, but in many scenarios, back into a fairly competitive market for listings, right? So mm -hmm. if you find a house on Zillow or realtor.com, or if you're brilliant and you're searching for homes at dallashomerealty.com or toddtremonteteam.com, if you find that house there, generally speaking, everyone else can find that house there as well. So just from a purely competitive standpoint, more eyeballs on it, more showings on it, more offers on it, right? Now, if Susan and Bob have their house that they're willing to sell, but it's not advertised on the internet and only one or two people know that and they tell you about it, you have a much higher likelihood of getting that home at a better price. That Bob and Susan are not likely to have a ton of showings and a bunch of offers. Now, that's not always the case, but the odds are in your favor in that scenario. So finding homes that are not publicly marketed, super competitive, is a wise approach. Sometimes that is potentially talking to a for sale by owner with an agent on your side. Now, there are other ways to do that. One of them that seems really, really counterintuitive right now is 
not letting interest rates keep you from buying a home right now. Believe it or not, that's a financially advantageous approach to the market because at some point in the long-term future, that rate has a very high likelihood of moving back down. And prices, although they are still growing right now, are growing at a much slower pace than they otherwise would based on the actual market and economic activity, when meaning supply and demand. There's also a chance that interest rates could go up, right? There so Because we don't know what the future is going to hold. So yeah. you might be locking in the best rate that you might see for the next couple of years. We just don't know. Well, and you said it really well. For the next couple of years, next 18 months or so, they, they could creep up a little bit. I think we all believe, we, there's no all, many, many, many. I, I was actually at an event where there were three different speakers from three different world-renowned financial institutions, including Goldman Sachs and others, uh, just last week while I was out, actually. And um, they, were, they were almost in lockstep on their forecast that the next 12 to 18 months will continue to be kind of up and down and all around and fairly volatile. But there's a strong belief that within that time frame, if not soon after, we will probably see mortgage rates come back down a bit. Many people hear that and they're like, great, I'll wait for that. Right. What I'm saying is a smart buyer strategy is to go ahead and buy now while lots of other buyers are thinking that. Get a better deal on the house. Yes, you might pay a slightly higher rate for a year or 18 months or two years, maybe even three or four years. And then at a later date, free up some cash flow with a refinance, uh, all the while have created equity during that. That's time. what I was going to say. You're going to build equity over the next 18 months. And when rates come down, those prices will go up. And I'm not sure you will have gained anything. So we could keep going, but there's a few for a quick. What about book. what about new builds? Like that seems like a pretty good opportunity, at least from what I'm hearing around our office right now. Because you're right when you say that it, it, you know the market has kind of tightened back up again. It's become more competitive again because, you know, just one morning this week, our team was talking about. They're, they've put in some backup offers on homes, right? In the hope mm -hmm. that that first one falls out. Now they're, they're an actual backup offer and they'll just slide straight into that uh, into that contracted slot. But I think new builds is another opportunity that people have, correct? Well, new builds is a great opportunity and, and, and there's more ways to define new builds than, than you may think, right? So for the first time in a long time, we have home builders, professional home builders with inventory on the ground, meaning... We have built a house and it has not already sold. You could buy it and move into it in the next 30 to 60 days. Instead of buy a lot, choose a couple features or not, and then wait a year to 15 months, right? We're talking brand new house, no one's ever lived in it that you could get into in the next 60 days or so. And those builders are offering some pretty juicy incentives to buyers right now. Those builders are, will, are willing to contribute dollars so that you could buy your interest rate back down into a really favorable place, cover some closing costs, they're incentivizing with upgrades and finish outs and things like that, like they do in a market where they're a little hungrier. And uh, between you and me, I'll whisper it, I don't think they necessarily need to be doing that right now. So I think that's gonna go away again here pretty soon. And again, tip for a buyer, go take advantage of that while you can. Well, and price-wise, if you go you know, further north than you know McKinney, if you go a little bit further up than that, you can find new build homes under 300,000 yeah, still. Yeah, farther. Well, we're sitting in a studio in Richardson, to be clear, when he says further north. Yeah, so further north of there, northeast, east, really in uh, 270 degrees. There's a couple pockets where you'd have to go real far to get there, but almost in a full 100, 360 degree ring around the, the Metroplex, if you're willing to go, say, 40 minutes out from the centers in almost every direction, you can find brand new on the ground construction under 300,000. I'll mention one other thing because I teased it. The other way to think about new construction is building a, a custom home, uh, like a one-off. Right now, we've seen land prices and construction prices kind of plateau a little bit where they were just skyrocketing before. So if, if ever you've dreamed of building something custom, buying a lot, tearing down a house maybe, um, doing some infill construction, or kind of creating your dream scenario, buy a couple acres, build on that. We talked to a lot of people about that. Now's a great time to do that as well, because I think the pricing on all those is going to shoot back up again in what we don't know that timeline. But in the next one to three years, I really feel confident that people are going to wish they had bought now. Yep. This next segment is brought to you by Home Serve Home Warranty. Christine over there and her entire team, uh, she, she checks in with us. She wants to make sure that our clients are 
extremely happy with the service that home serve are giving uh, giving them i've got personal friends that have had home serve and they've just said to me hey when we called they they answered and they sent somebody out quickly and we were able to get the stuff done that needed to be done and it didn't cost us an arm and a leg because they stuck to what it is that they said yeah, we've used them multiple times and if for folks that don't know exactly what a home warranty is it's kind of a basic coverage on the basic systems in your home so that you don't have to worry about who to call and how to get it fixed something silly in your house minor plumbing problem electrical problem mechanical problem you just call the home warranty company home serve and they will send out different vendors for different things. You pay what, what feels like a copay at the doctor. You pay 65, 75 bucks, they cover the rest. And then you have an annual policy. We think it's really wise to have that at least, at least the first year you live in a home. You'll sleep better at night, you'll save money, and you'll feel really confident in the condition of your home. Check them out at HomeServe, Home Warranty, HomeServe.com. Yep, uh, the Dallas, Texas housing market, Todd. That we've, one we've talked about, you know, you look at last year and if somebody asks you like, Hey, how was, I was last year in real estate, you're explaining just a roller coaster, right? It was up, yep. down, up, down. It was all different. What, what are we doing now though? Like what's the state of the current market? What are we projecting over the next, you know, the rest of this year? What have we seen so far? Cause we've already seen a couple of different kind of iterations of the Dallas housing market. Is it going up? Is it going down? What the heck is it doing? Okay. Buckle up. I'm going to give you maybe a <clears throat> two to three minute hot take as fast as I can give it to you. Okay. First quarter, January, February, March of 2023 felt exactly like 22. All over the place. Not real, um, not real consistent. Now, at the same time, it felt more logical than 20 and 21. And what I mean by that is there was some logic. If your house wasn't really well marketed, it didn't sell as well. If your house wasn't priced really well, it didn't sell as well. If you weren't focused and prepared as a buyer, you overpaid. If you were focused and prepared as a buyer, you got some really, really good deals, right? So there's logic in that, right? More prepared, better homes did better. More prepared, you know, uh, more strategic buyers got better deals. That In that regard, it was much more logical. But the external market, interest rates, pricing, the, the consumer mindset confidence out there was just all over the place. And what we said all last year and all first quarter of this year was different people are going to have different experiences in their market based on their preparation and their expectations, right? If you're really optimistic, you, you can achieve great things. If you're super pessimistic, you can go and find a kick in the face, right? So that happened basically from March of 22 through March of 23. That's kind of been the case. Now, what's going to happen the rest of 23, which is kind of the bigger question here. Let me give you a six month prediction because I feel pretty confident in the next six months, basically through the through the end of summer. Let's just say through September. OK, I think we're going to see a, a fairly exciting market. And what I mean by that is a lot more activity than we saw for the previous 12 months. I think we're going to see uh, less uncertainty less and less uncertainty the closer we get towards the end of summer 23. What, what I mean by that is right or wrong, you're going to see sellers feeling a little bit more certain they can get good pricing and buyers feeling a little bit more certain they need to compete again. Now, that's what I think is going to happen over the next six months. I expect mortgage interest rates to stay generally about where they are. I think there will be some windows of opportunity where they'll dip down to to what we will now call really attractive rates. And I think there will be some pockets where they'll swing back up to right about where they are now. Now, after September, I'm going to be really honest with you and our audience. I don't know. I really don't know what to expect for fourth quarter this year. I think it could be a positive continuation of summer. But I think the closer and closer we get to heavy political season and a lot of promises about economic futures and a lot of accusations about the cause of economic past, we're going to get back into a lot more uncertainty and you just don't know where human behavior is going to go. If the stock market's up, I think you're going to see a, a really healthy real estate market. If the stock market's down and there's a lot of pitical political unrest, which I expect, uh, then I think you'll see uh, a, more of that market where you can get what you expect and lots of confusion and mixed messages. I do think this is also a question that you know, it, it can be very specific depending on where you live, which side of the For metroplex sure. you live, which cities you live in. 
what type of property you own. Like this is a question that you should be reaching out to somebody like the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team where we can get you connected with an expert that can talk to you specifically about what's happening in your city, your neighborhoods, what we're seeing, what trends are happening. Like that's something that that we're happy to do and want to do. Go to toddtremonteam.com, fill in any of the forms right there and somebody will reach out to you and we can do that for you. Yeah, we, I mean, we we say this over and over and over until we're nearly blue in the face, but real estate is hyper local, right? Uh, your zip code is going to act differently than another zip code. Your neighborhood is going to act differently than another neighborhood. And honestly, your street is going to act differently than different streets. You're part of your street. You know, the top of the hill where the trees are, the bottom of the hill where it floods a little bit. Real estate is hyper local. And therefore, when we give, when I answer a question of what's going to happen in DFW real estate, it's an impossible question to answer. Yep. So we're giving a DFW specific, which is way more helpful than a Texas specific or a regional or a national, national. but still not, still not everything you need. We're trying to serve the market as a whole. If you have questions, do what my son says and go to. Todd Tremonti team.com. That's Todd Tremonti team.com. And if you can't spell my name like most can't, just do your very best on Google and you'll find us. You'll find over 700 Google reviews. You'll find all sorts of helpful, informative information with links to the websites and videos and YouTube channels and podcasts and all the things that can help you. It's not about us. It's about helping you be more informed, more confident, sleep a little bit better at night, but also don't sit in your indecision and be able to move forward towards your goals and dreams of buying, selling, investing in real estate. This next question is brought to you by DP Lambert and his team over at Goosehead Insurance. DP.Lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T at Goosehead.com is how you can connect with DP. You can connect with him on our website. You can see how he can save you thousands of dollars like he's saved me over the years. He saved Todd. He saved so many of my friends, family members, clients, team members. He's just saved us a ton of money, home insurance, auto insurance, bundling, not bundling. Man, he goes through everything. I was actually, when I was on vacation, I was in line to pick up a rental car and they are asking, do you need to have additional insurance? And I didn't know the answer to it because mm -hmm. I didn't know if my insurance covers it. I was like, hey, hold on one second. Let me text my insurance guy. And the face of the person was like, that's weird. Yep. I texted him and within... 15 seconds actually got a response i got my response he was like yeah you're gonna need it like most companies now don't offer blah 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 and he right. kind of explained it and i was like plus that's your what I rental car had 460 horsepower so it might be wise I to go ahead 480 i don't want to downplay me. it pardon me pardon um but no it was great like but that's what dp does like he gets yep. back to you when you need him dp.lambert l-a-m-b-e-r-t at goosehead.com with interest rates, what they are, with what we're projecting, what we're seeing, the fear that's out there, the articles that get written, the home prices. Are we going to become a nation of renters? What? Um, that's it. So listen, I want to give you a short answer. I really, really do. And if I had to give you a yes or no answer, which I don't, by the way, but if I did, I'm leaning yes. Now, let me give you the one minute version of that. We are moving towards a higher rate of people renting than owning right now because the cost of home ownership in our country historically has been relatively affordable. There have been seasons where it's wildly affordable. As a matter of fact, I, I, I read two books in the last week about kind of the psychology of money. And one of them was phenomenal. It was really more of a history book about how money has worked throughout history in America. And and really what it was about is the psycho like how people have related with money. So after a war, how did people respond? Um, population expansion, how do people spend, save? You know, how does a generation respond to the Great Depression? And then how did the country incentivize those people to, you know, spend more money, engage, all that kind of stuff, right? Really, really fascinating stuff. Um, but where we are right now, is where it is, you know, a hot mess of sorts, right? So because of that, fear drives people to renting. Interest rates drive people to renting. Higher cost of home ownership drives people to renting. But, it's a big but, but renting in many, many places is still as expensive or more expensive than it has ever been. So this is not an automatic, like, I'll save money and rent default. This is... I will rent maybe year to year and just get obliterated on my rental fees. 
And then you have to really evaluate person by person, family by family, situation by situation. Is that wise for you? Because I'm, I am never going to say that renting is stupid for everybody. But I often tell people, man, renting is just a financially uh, backwards move for you. But it's not rare, though, that we tell someone, hey, for you to rent for six months or another year would be really wise. So it is a case-by-case -case basis. Now, in mass, on, on broad strokes, I, will, I, I believe firmly that home ownership is a path to wealth. It is not only a mathematical equation, though. The psychology, the safety, the security, the momentum, the, 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 the environment, the relational benefits that come from ownership are ought to be valued much higher. Now, if you want the quick reel on social media, people are barking, you know, don't own your primary home, go own an investment home. That is a purely mathematical calculation. And I disagree with it even on the math, but from a whole life, family, cultural deal, home ownership is one of the greatest things that you can do. But our family is, our country is losing ground on that. If we're not careful, if we don't get better advice, if we don't pay better attention to the cost of things, and if we don't get our inflation under uh, you know, control. So that's a whole nother ball of wax. You know what? We've had hail this year. We've had heavy winds this year. We've hidden in the bathroom a couple of times. Uh, we've, had a, we've had some really quick, hard, heavy rain this year. And we've had a bunch of people make the mistake of not having their roof in order and therefore have some significant issues. Now, look, if you have significant issues, PMR roofing, are the reliable, trusted, do it right, don't sell you anything you don't need roofer that I would point you towards. And I'd point you over to their really good, helpful website, pmrroofing.com. But if you haven't had somebody check out your roof to make sure that you're damage free or to prepare you for the next storm to make sure that a small thing doesn't become a big thing, I want you to call Jordan Collins at PMR Roofing, 214-957-0839 or easier to remember, just go to pmrroofing.com. And if you ever forget any of that, just go to tontramonteteam.com and we'll get you all squared away. One more quick hit, Keen Landscaping. I'm actually meeting with uh, one of the owners uh, on a project we're working on this week. Uh, go to keenlandscaping.com, K-E-A-N-E, -E, Keen Landscaping for all of your design, consultation, landscaping construction, landscaping maintenance, Retaining walls, irrigation, tree work. They even do pools, and they also have North Texas trees. It is that time of year. Don't wait any longer. Get your landscaping maintenance and your landscaping projects done so that you can enjoy it the rest of spring, summer, and fall online at keenlandscaping.com. That's K-E-A-N-E, -E, keenlandscaping.com. If you would like to talk to a full-time, fully dedicated, world-class professional real estate agent, we're doing that with folks for free. We call it a free strategy session. Just go to toddtremonteteam.com, click any button, fill out any form, take one of the quizzes or the scorecards. We'll get in touch with you in whatever way is comfortable for you, whatever way you're ready for. And the easiest thing to do is right now, call or text 214-310-0008. Save this in your phone. Call us anytime, 214-310-0008 for the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Hey, we were rapping and singing before we got started today. There was some Biggie references. Just making it happen here in the studio. Uh, Ian just gave me a weird look. Did I, I miss that? You did. Okay. Courtney and I had it handled, though, so mm. we didn't need your help. Welcome back. This is DFW Real Estate. We are talking all things residential real estate across DFW. If you miss us on air on Saturdays, you can still get in on the action, folks. You can still check it out on the podcast. Just go to your Apple podcast and look for DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti. So DFW Real Estate, look up Todd Tremonti. You will find us. Check that out. Download it. Listen to it. Share it with your friends. We're giving you week-to-week -week updates on the DFW real estate market as well as obvious commentary on headlines, questions, and what buyers, sellers, and investors and homeowners and even renters can be doing just to enjoy the home you already have. You don't have to be making a move for us to want to add value in your life. We are the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. We help hundreds of people buy, sell, negotiate, remodel, update, protect their home value every single day all throughout the year with an office in Fort Worth and an office in Richardson. So we got East and West covered and uh, we love to help you on the North and South as well. So we're here for you, Todd Tremonti Team. Dot com. 
Uh, we only hire full-time, fully dedicated real estate agents. We train them ad nauseum. We also coach and train agents all over North America to follow our unique business model, which operates a lot more like a law firm, an accounting firm, or a physician's office than the traditional real estate agent that may be winging it, working out of the back seat of the car, or trying to shove their business card in your hand all the time. We want to love on you a little bit, serve you as much as we can, be world-class experts, and help make the real estate part of your life an enjoyable, valuable, wealth-building, family-building connection area of your life. So whatever your priorities are in real estate, if we can help you, save this phone number in your cell phone. You can call or text anytime. 214-310-0008. 214-310-0008. Or online, like my son says. DodgerMoneyTeam.com. You know, I'm excited to spend some time with the uh, other agents that we coach with next week. Yeah, it's, so, we, so we have a small group of consulting clients that come into, we have a, we built out a space in our building for this kind of thing. And they come in three times a year for two days each, plus another big annual event we do. And we get to kind of look under the hood of their businesses and they might say, hey, I'm over here in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we are trying to solve this problem for our clients. And then we put kind of the collective brain power, mind power of agents from some of the top markets all over the country and some some smaller markets as well. Uh, and then we're, we're kind of the primary leader, instructor, coach, consultant. But we then benefit as well from learning from what people are innovating and improving and seeing in other markets that may be a little bit ahead of us in the curve or a little bit ahead, behind us in an economic market shift. So it's a huge value to you, our friends, family, neighbors here in the DFW area as well. And we do that all throughout the year where we get to add a lot of value for them, but also get to learn and grow and get value from them as well for your benefit. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that or how that could be beneficial to you as you buy, sell, and invest, let's set up a free strategy call or a free strategy session where we can sit down together. We can do that by Zoom. We can start it by phone. Best possible scenarios. You come into the office, we'll buy you a cup of coffee, bottle of water, Coke, Dr. Pepper, maybe even a Topo Chico. Mm. And we'll chat with you about uh, all of your questions. We might ask you some questions you didn't know to ask yourself and get you prepared. Whether you're buying, selling, investing now, next year, five years from now, we don't care. We'll be here to help you when the time is right. ToddTremontiTeam.com or call or text 214-310-0008. This first segment always brought to you by Patrick Lewis and his team at Cardinal Financial. Reach out to him whether you're thinking about refinancing, whether you're wanting to buy. No matter what it is, Patrick can help you with that. You can go to Patrick Glaros. <clears throat> excuse me. Excused. You're fine. PatrickGlaros.com. Specifically, if you're looking to get a mortgage, something like that, mortgage questions, you need to get a mortgage. You're looking to buy a, a, Lake a house. secondary home. Rental home. Primary home. It wouldn't matter. Reach out to Patrick. PatrickGlaros.com. 972-728-3420. NMLS number 308804. Nailed it. NMLS 308. Y'all are jealous of the way I say that. I, I appreciate it. I've that. never even hidden the fact that I'm jealous of the way you say things. Not one time. I travel all over the country and people say, where are you from? And I say, Texas. And they say, no, you're not. Because I didn't, I don't have like a small town Texas accent. I grew mm -hmm. up in giant cities, Houston and Dallas. And you don't. So... Let me be very clear about my envy uh, of your delightful, soothing tone. Well, I, there's just no humility in that. I'm just straight up, or total humility. What is it? It's total humility. And that uh, basically the only reason we hired you was that gorgeous voice of yours. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, before we get to the question, Todd, there's, <laughs> Courtney, a, uh, Courtney, enjoy there's that a new one. word I'm going to teach you <laughs> from the uh, Cockney rhyming slang. Oh, uh, this is dangerous. This we, is we dangerous. We debuted this segment last week. I don't know if you know that, but we did yeah, debut yeah. it. And I'm going to give you... I did hear Andrew say live on air, while the boss is away, we're going to play. I was like, <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> we had some good now, stuff. Now you know I listen when I'm gone, so check yourself. We Go had ahead. some good stuff. All right, if I was to tell you that there's a bunch, that there's a whole lot of box of toys going on, Wait, there's a lot of boxes of boxes toys. Boxes of toys. Box of toys. I can't stand this box of toys. Any Noise. guesses? Courtney! Yes. Noise? You got it! Yes. That's, I would never have gone Box there. of toys. Noise. Well, well, you missed last week. It's about... A carnival rhyme. rhyming. It's about carnival rhyming. Carnival barker rhyming types. But there's I also reasoning packs. behind it. So why would Noise. box of toys be noise? 
Well, because they're noisy. Exactly. It's as a box shaking. of toys, particularly, a, this was from The Guardian, particularly a new one given as a present at Christmas time causes Shake a it. great deal of noise to be made. Noise. I got it. I can't believe I got it. I right. can't believe you did either because it makes no sense. I can't believe we've done this two weeks in a row. I'm looking forward to week three. Oh, gosh. All right. Here we go. Question time. I'm going to try and decipher this one. It got sent to me. It got an article. It got sent to me. Uh, about the DFW, the Dallas real estate market being overvalued. There was an article oh, yeah. from therealdeal.com that said that the Metroplex's homes ranked 18th most overvalued in the nation according to an academy you study on a finding. Of lies. And it says that, I'm just going to read this section to you. A study by Florida Atlantic and, and Florida International Universities compared Zillow's estimated typical value of $381,089 for local single family homes, townhomes, condos, co ops, to historical data going back to 1997. The Dallas Morning News reported the researchers found that homes sell 48.4% more than the price of 256878 that would have been expe- expected under long term trends. Okay. First of all, it's the longest question in the history of this radio show. I counted five stupid parts about that uh, headline or article or whatever it was, and I, you know, pardon my language here, but I use stupid on purpose. Now, here's the thing. First of all, it's always Florida Atlantic and Florida I feel like we should give, like, an EMF's kid, see if we're going to use that kind uh, of language. No, that's, listen, it is what it is. Uh, it's always Florida Atlantic and Florida International. I'm telling you, those are the two that drive me nuts the most when they're like, here's some national data we drew from across the country that's loosely related to your hyper-specific market. So take that. But here's the thing. That article is silly, and it's silly on multiple fronts. I, I really don't think I'll remember all five, so you can you can look for them if you'd like. Number one is that the entire thing is based on assumed future values starting in 1998. Like, based on where we think we should have been, based on the most complicated economic calculation in the history of the world, throw it out the window. That's already worthless. Where we think we should have been, as if you could ever, any one research group, I don't care if you put two colleges together or not, are going to accurately, legitimately, and confidently forecast from 1998, where we should have been in 2023, counting interest rates, politics, economy, job market, wars, geopolitical leaders. That's just absurd to think that there's almost any validity in that whatsoever. The other thing is that the comparison was Zillow's valuation of properties. Oh, you'd like that bit. Yeah. Well, clearly I do. I'd love it. If what we mean by love is think it's really dumb. So I could keep going. The answer is, are homes in DFW more expensive than people thought they would be five or 10 years ago or 20 years ago? Of course they are. Now, are they more expensive, even more expensive? Like, have they grown even more than people thought they would on the top of the growth range? Yes, that's absolutely accurate as well. 48.8%. That may even be an accurate number. What's funny is the sentence after it says, prior to the pandemic, local homes are only overpriced by 8.89%. Yeah. And overpriced is a silly word too, because here's the deal. Things are worth what they're worth. What they're saying is overpriced compared to what we thought they would do, right? And again, I'll point you towards like the preponderance of times that people were wrong about what they thought would happen, right? You know, in 2019, we thought we were going into a recession. Then we had a pandemic that actually like set the economy on fire because we gave everybody a bunch of free money in back to the future in back to the future they thought we'd all be going around on hoverboards right now well my kids have hoverboards and so do yours Uh, they don't have they don't hover quite like marty mcfly his name was marty mcfly sir sorry god no you're right you're right because somebody tried to refer to uh sylvester stallone the other day as sylvester stallone now he's rocky rocky he's rambo john rambo he's rocky first i don't disagree with that at all Anyway, I'm glad we agreed and we yep, were both we're willing to be humbled and just acknowledge, listen, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy, True right? friendship Listen, right there. as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. Okay, here's the thing. Um, it's a silly article, but here's the reality that it is representing. You know, 20, 30 years ago, people did not expect DFW home values to go up as much as they have. That's true, and they have. And what we've been trying to tell people for uh, almost two years now is 
this is not a short-term trend. This is not a fad that's going to go away. This is our long-term reality in North Texas. We used to sit here in Texas and say homes in Texas are just phenomenally, you know, a much better value than California, Florida, New York, Chicago. And now what we're saying is they're a better value, but not as much as not as much better as they used to be. We've caught up some, right? If if housing was 20% of your total income before, it's for a lot of people now 25 and 30 or maybe 35%. Are we headed to like a New York City scenario, a San Francisco scenario where it may be 55 or 60? I don't know that for sure, but I'm telling you the likelihood is that we're moving towards re residential real estate in North Texas being a larger percentage of your annual income versus heading towards it being a lower percentage. That's the reality of what we're dealing with, which is why we keep advising people don't get, don't get, don't drown in the short term information. Think long term and long term, you are highly likely to want to be invested in residential real estate in North Texas. If you want your children to own a home down the road, if you want to have cash flow income from real estate, if you want to own a home outright, if you want to have a home in your retirement years that you can afford on a fixed income or on a lesser income. You, you, you need to at least be thinking about that right now, if not taking action on that right now, because all signs do point towards residential real estate being a larger portion of your expenses going forward. RepublicTitle.com, Republic Title are one of the leaders in the industry. Uh, whether you're thinking about buying, selling, you need to check them out. They're you need just to see so everything good. they're going to offer. You know, once again, this week, we started off the week with one of our team members saying, closed property yesterday, and it was a terrible experience, and I had to walk my client through paperwork. And you're like... Yeah, one of oh. our agents had to basically do the job of the title company and explain all the complicated documents and how funds would be transferred because the title company just didn't do it. That was their job, and they just didn't do it. Thankfully, our guy is like, he knows what he's talking about, and he was able to do that really, really well. That doesn't excuse what happened. Republic title, nope, not going to happen. Does not happen there. Got some friends, uh, actually friends uh, that will be closing there uh, this coming week. We'll be closing right there, Beautiful. Republic title. So it's going to be good. RepublicTitle.com is where you can go to get information on everything that they offer. RepublicTitle.com. TotraMoneyTeam.com is where you can find all of the recommended pros and vendors. You want to hear, hear a funny Republic title story real fast? Real fast. So one of their executives was in the office the other day hanging out and just chatting with our team members. And we were joking with them. We had some fake money, some fake hundred dollar bills oh, in the yeah. office. And we were, we were trying to rough them up and weather them and make them look really real. And they looked really real. So I gave her one, just kind of shooting the bull joking. Well, she called me. I was traveling and she was traveling. She called me a few days later. She goes, Tremani. I was like, what? She goes, I thought I had a hundred dollars more than I did when I got on the airplane. I was like, what? So long story short, she had been traveling. She was covering some costs for some uh, clients or That's guests or whatever. Funny. She pulled out a hundred dollar bill. and was like, dad, come in. It's not real. Anyway, it was fun. That's funny. All right. Here's a question that we got. I'm going to give you two options, a home or stock. And the question is, which one of those should you be thinking about buying right now? If you can afford to buy your kids a home, should you buy them a home or should you buy them stock? I will not tell you what to do in regard to that question. I will tell you what I'm thinking for myself. Is okay. that safe? Call the attorneys and find out if that's a safe enough disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. I do not give financial investment advice on this radio show. That feels safe and legitimate enough. But I'll give you the approval. We'll get There are certain books on money and financing that I like to read every time I'm reevaluating my approach and I probably reevaluate my approach more than I should, you know, uh, but these are things I pay attention to and I'm super interested in. So at the moment, I can tell you that many, 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 many people are not excited about their returns in the stock market. And they're not really optimistic about the short term, midterm future of the stock market. That's not me. That's a lot of really smart people that follow the equity markets, the stocks and bond markets, right? So Many of them are not expecting significant returns in the next year or two. Goldman put out a report the other day that said they think uh, we will, there's like a 40% chance of a recession in 23 and as much as a 65% chance of a recession in 24, 2024. Typically in the recessionary market, you're going to see the stock market down. So therefore, and that's just typically, I don't know for sure. That's, there's a lot of people that are like, man, I'm really not excited about dropping a bunch of money in the market and just watching it go down. Now, long-term investors say just, 
you know, bite your tongue, just put the money in there, hold your nose and it'll work out in the long term. But we, I am talking to a lot more people that are like, man, I think maybe I'd like to park some of that money in real estate. Should I buy a home as a rental? Doesn't mean that is the house your children will live in or own later, but you're just buying a chunk of the residential market right now that later you could sell, you could 1031 exchange, you could roll that money into paying for kids college, uh, not necessarily helping them, but being able to do something to allow them access to a residential property in their 20s or 30s. So I am looking for more real estate opportunities and less uh, stock and bond opportunities. That doesn't mean no stock or bond opportunities, and that doesn't mean exclusively real estate, but I am personally more excited about and interested in uh, the short and midterm opportunity with residential real estate in North Texas than I am in the stock market. I'm more optimistic about it. I think now is a more opportune time. While a lot of people are really kind of frustrated and angry about um, the economy as a whole, their investment returns, interest rates, it's, you know, Warren Buffett basically says, go the opposite direction of everybody else, right? When everybody else is greedy, be conservative. When everyone else is being conservative, be greedy. I'm not recommending greed as an actual like sinful approach, but when you're looking for investment returns and a lot of other people are like not doing anything or they're running the opposite direction because of rates, I think it's a good time to get into a property. I am currently looking for uh, one to four units of, you know, additional rental assets to create some cash flow. This next segment is brought to you by Keen Landscaping. You know why? Why? Because they can do your design. Uh -huh. They can do your construction. Uh -huh. They can do your maintenance. Uh -huh. They can do retaining walls, okay. flower beds, trees, irrigation, lighting, pathways, pools. They can do it all. They also have North Texas trees. I want you to check them out online at keenlandscaping.com. That's K-E-A-N-E, -E, keenlandscaping.com. And I've got to stop real quick and just say, you know, when we talk about PMR roofing, we talk about them the same way every time. Like basically it's not wise to not have somebody check out your roof every once, uh, every year or two. But in the springtime, which we call hail season here in North Texas, it's really, really unwise to get any heavy wind, any heavy rain or any hail at all and not have a roofer that you can trust check that out because you might need an insurance claim. You might not, you might need some work and it might be minimal. Like, Hey, we need to reseal some flashing. We need to work on where these, these ventilation boots come into your attic. Not a big deal, but if you don't do anything about it, they bake all summer and get rained on in the fall. Now you have a leak sheetrock damage and you got to redo your kitchen. Nobody wants that. Take care of your roof. Actually let PMR roofing take care of your roof. Check out their website. It's really informative, pmrroofing.com, or call our buddy Jordan Collins at 214-957-0839. And where can folks go if they forget what we tell them about all of our friends? Uh, you can go to like this toddtremonyteam.com website, I think it's called. Team com. There you go, that one. Just look for Todd, search him up, Google him. Try spell it right. Are you doing You'll the search there. them up? Are you are you saying search it, search it up now as opposed to look it up? Because my kids say search it up. I say look it up. You just said search them up. Have yeah. you search are you are you hip to the jive? Have you tapped out or no, you... I'm fairly hip anyway, Todd. Okay. I just do my He's own hip, thing. Hip to the jive, Courtney. Hey, I want to get to this last <clears throat> question. We only got a couple minutes left. It's to do with buying land. Whether buying land is Love a good land. investment. Love land. Whether that's undeveloped land, developed land, like is it a good investment? Yes. Great. Continue. <laughs> Here's the thing. Roll with the last couple you know, minutes. Whatever uh, you want. If you if you ever like. <laughs> I have an older soul. I, I like I like simple advice from an old timer in a rocking chair if I can get it. And that type of advice is they're not making any more of it, right? Like historically land just always goes up in value. Now that's not true for every, you know, three year period, five year period, but Texas land ha has, has long been a phenomenal investment. And if you're asking me about North Texas, I believe we have decades and decades and decades, if not generations of more growth to come. So. If you're talking about speculative, just buy it and hold it land, I present to you Jerry Jones, who bought just about every piece of land he could along Preston, north of DFW, forever ago. And everybody was like, man, why? Well, that's called Frisco now. That's Plano. That's Prosper. <laughs> like, that worked out okay. Uh, you know, the, the star up there where the Cowboys practice, like, not a bad investment, mm -hmm. right? They're putting a Universal Studios up there next. Yeah, we talked about it last week. Got approved. So, so here's the deal. Um, 
as a certain percentage and portia, portion ratio of your investment portfolio, I think land is a great investment. Now, on the other hand, most of us are not going to go Jerry Jones this thing, right? So would, would buying a home or a rental property or a small commercial building on a little bit more land than you might need be a good investment? Absolutely, I think so. Uh, would would buying would buying a reasonably sized you know ranch or recreational property allow you to play and also have some future uh, uh, appreciation maybe even some cash flow opportunities it would lots of my friends that are smart investors are doing that with um, storage units um, you know boat and RV storage RV parks uh, some of them are just purely parking their money in land because it's a real asset that even if the resale value of it were to go down, there's some utility to it as opposed again to the stock market where that money could fluctuate or actually go away. So that's the shortest answer I can give you because it's a very complex thing to talk about. But yes, I really do like having some land in an investment portfolio, especially if you can get some use out of it, whether that's hunting, fishing, farming, grazing, leasing it out to someone doing those things, storage of some kind, uh, plant nursery, you know, whatever. Driving ranges, by the way, are typically just land holding investments. They're trying to cash flow it while they ha let people hit golf balls on it. Not a lot of infrastructure. We're not talking top golf. We're talking an old school driving range. And then eventually when that land gets super, super valuable, you sell it and someone builds something there. And now it's worth a ton of money, but it didn't cost you anything in the, in the, while you held it, or you even cash flowed it while you held it from people hitting golf balls. Just one example. If you're thinking about investing in that manner or in your own home or in a couple of them, just call our team. We will set you up for a 100% free strategy session. Go to ToddTremontyTeam.com. Google Todd Tremonti. Just get as close as you can to the spelling. You'll find us. You can check out over 700 reviews. Sign up for some time to chat with no obligation or call or text. 214-310-0008.